Good afternoon. I'm Noeline Brookbanks and I'm reading this on behalf of my friend Gordon Kendrick. Most nations have set aside days to celebrate great military victories or liberating cities and countries. New Zealand has a day to remember, a natural tragedy. The campaign that unfolded on the Gallipoli Peninsula, nearly half a world away and over a century ago, is a story of stalemate, high command failure, mass graves, desperation and despair. When World War I broke out in 1914, thousands of young men joined, in, jo joined up for what they thought would be a great adventure. They would never have imagined the misery they would have to endure. On April 25th, 1915, the Anzac troops landed at what is now known as Anzac Cove. The Allies needed to take the Gallipoli Peninsula. This was the initial part of a plan to capture Constantinople, the capital of the Ottoman Empire. Anzac Cove was several kilometres from where they were supposed to land. It was just a small beach, only 20 yards wide, and about half the length of Browns Bay Beach. Immediately behind this were sheer rock faces, huge hills and steep gullies covered in waist-high thorny scrub and heavily armed Turkish troops waiting for them. Many Australian and New Zealand soldiers were killed as they scrambled ashore at dawn on that first day, one in five soldiers were killed or wounded. This was not how it was supposed to be. Four and a half months later, the Anzac troops had advanced and no further than they did when they landed. The New Zealand battalions were given the task of reaching and holding the summit of Chinook Brer, a strategic high point. Of course, the Turkish soldiers were ready for them. The Australians were sent in to draw away the I Turks' attention right by taking a heavily defended point called Lone Pine. They had 1,400 dead in the first two days. After intense fighting with no cover at Shunak Bear, the New Zealanders were still 20 metres short of the summit at sundown. The Wellingtonian, the Wellington Infantry Battalion was sent to reach the top. 760 soldiers made it to the top, but only 70 made it back again safely. Despite more troops trying to take the summit, it was lost to the Turks in a massive counterattack. It was the first fighting of the war, of the whole, it, of the whole Gallipoli campaign. The New Zealanders suffered over 2,300 ca casualties. Most of the dead have no known graves. It was the closest we would come to a victory on Gallipoli, and yet it was our greatest tragedy. At the end of the 10-month campaign, the thousands upon thousands who died on both sides included 8,700 Australians and nearly 2,800 New Zealanders. This disastrous campaign was not the success it was intended to be and had very little overall effect on the war. Gordon visited Gallipoli with his wife Shirley 
and remember standing among the graves at Anzac Cove in the heights of the Shulig Bear in the stillness and the sunshine. It was a most moving experience and it brought home to me the tragic waste of all those young lives. While memory of many New Zealand tragedies have faded over the decades, public interest in Gallipoli and the story of the Anzacs has grown. Why is this? Every year, more and more people of all generations attend Anzac Day ceremonies to honour not just those who died at Gallipoli, but the fallen from wars since then. They remember the sacrifice these men made and why we are able to live in freedom today. The events of Gallipoli helped forge New Zealand's identity as an independent nation and have in turn given all New Zealanders, regardless of heritage or beliefs, a shared history to be commemorated. Just as our ancestors fought and died together in defence of freedom, all New Zealanders stand today to remember. It is an example of how things should always be. Oh.